What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the Chad G Garage. So, I need to update you guys. Unfortunately, I got the car on the road, or not on the road, but I got the car running, and I wasn't able to film any part of it because it was like a really bad day. But I got the car running, driving, it runs, drives, stops great. I'm really excited and I wanted to update you guys on the project. So I came out here Sunday and worked on the car. Um, it was a really nice day, the weather was great, and unfortunately right when I came out, I was grabbing my air hose with my impact gun, and I knocked over this big, like three gallon bucket of used coolant and completely soaked everything underneath the EM1, and it put me in a really bad mood, and I just pretty much busted out all the work that I could as fast as I could to get the car, out of the garage so that I could just get the coolant off of the floor before it like soaked into everything and just trash the garage even more. So I'm gonna update you guys on what we're gonna do today. Um, nothing too crazy is gonna happen tonight. And I'm also not really sure where this video is gonna go, but for right now we're gonna be installing window regulators. So I got these window regulators. Uh, I got a pair of them because both of them on the car are bad so I'll show you guys how to install window regulators if you have a 96 to 2000 Honda Civic you know the struggle these things always go bad so I'll do my best to kind of document how to replace window regulators it's the same process whether it's manual or electric so and it's a really easy process and it really like totally like transforms the interior if your window regulators don't work it's like super annoying and it makes the car like feel like a super beater so window regulators are coming here soon um, those are right there, and there's another one all right there. Um, let's see, what else did we get done? Um, let me update you on the car here. It's probably finally nice to see the rear of the car. You guys haven't really seen the rear. And you can see my awesome, lovely dent right here. So, wheels are on. The wheels are looking great. Really glad that I just went ahead and just spray bombed them because they turned out really good. Still need to get my new tires installed on the wheels. Here's the finished product in the bay. The bay is really dirty, I need to clean it up. But power steering is installed now. Everything is looking good. Now another reason for my frustration on Sunday is I couldn't get a power steering pump to work in this thing. So what I'm gonna be doing is replacing this pulley on this video. And that pulley, when it's, when it's running, it wobbles like crazy. I don't know why, it's just bent. So I'm gonna take a pulley off of one of my other pumps that I thought were for the B16, but they're not. So I'm gonna be installing those in this video. Um, I also got my new front lip here. I painted that, turned out okay. Probably looks a lot better in the photos than it does in person. But I did smudge it right there with my thumb. And you guys can see it there. So there's some flaws. There's a couple runs in the clear coat because I laid the clear coat like, like super, super heavy and I got a couple runs. Here's the old lip. I did go, just go ahead and go with the same lip, but this thing is like in really poor condition. They had it mounted terribly. Luckily, those mounting holes in the side are very minimal. You can barely see them. So once I get the new front lip on there, it's gonna bring the front end together really well. It looks naked without a front lip. So yeah, I'll show you guys what the struggle is here with uh, the 96 to 2000 Honda Civics and how crappy their window regulators are. Luckily, they're pretty cheap. Two of them were $60 shipped with brand new uh, motors as well. So window regulators with motors are the easiest way to fix these cars. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what happens when you hit the button here. I mean, we got... Just terrible. On this side, this side kind of works. But it's going to work a lot better when the new one's installed. So I'm going to get to work. I'll show you guys how to do window regulators on a 96 2000 Civic. I'm going to go ahead and install that new pulley. And then tomorrow, when it gets nice out, or tomorrow in the sun, if it's nice out, when I go home from work, I'll show you guys the car with the lip installed, and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it washed so that you guys can see like the final finished product, what the car is gonna be, and you know I'm gonna drive it just for a couple days, put some miles on it, make sure everything's good, 
if there's any bugs, I'm gonna work it out and then, you know, maybe put it up for sale or, or maybe, you know, just start daily driving. I'm not sure yet. I really need to make some money because I want to start working on the garage here. And I want to start working on this. And I want to start working on the hatch. So I got a lot of cars that I want to work on and I got projects. I, I really want to get this garage cleaned up. I want all this storage area here to go away and like move all this junk down the barn and just have like a super clean white walls in here so that I, I, I don't know. I just don't like the clutter in here. I want it to be like really clean and nice and if I can get all this out of here then I can also fit another car in here maybe. I usually have three or I usually have five cars in this garage but I have so much clutter in here now that I can't fit five in here anymore. So I want to get all that down to the barn. That's why I built the barn. It's for storage. Get all my storage stuff down there and then maybe I'll be able to bring up another car in here and be able to work on two cars at the same time while storing my daily driver in here as well. That's the goal. So um, I don't know. I'm going to show you guys the window regulators here and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so you got a screw behind this door handle. It's up there in the corner there. That needs to come out. There's a screw right there. And then you got to remove the speaker as well. Once you get that removed, you can pop the door panel out. And then you lift the door panel up because there's a, a lip right here that's going to keep the door panel kind of seated onto the door. So really easy. Remove the speaker, remove the door handle, remove the door pull. These both need to come completely out as well as the speaker. And then you can use a tool like a large screwdriver or if you have trim tools and pop the clips out, lift the panel out and get it out of the car. All right, so this is what your door is gonna look like with the panel off. Plug in your switch. Then you have to drop the window down to where you can access the 10 mil window bolts. So that hole right there is to access the window bolt. This one's easily accessible. Remove the window at this point. Window's out. So now we gotta remove the regulator from the door, which is the hardest part. So you got these 10 mil bolts here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then that one may need to come out too. I don't remember on an EK, but this bolt may need to come out because the window run might have to come out. I don't think you have to do that on an EK. Some cars are a pain in the ass, like a Subaru. Subaru regulators are a pain in the ass, but um, I don't remember. So you disconnect this connector, remove the bolts, and then I believe the regulator will come out of this hole right here. I don't remember, I'm just gonna struggle with it, knock it out, and I'll do a time lapse. So that was super easy. Literally took me like five minutes to get the regulator out. So line up your other regulator, make sure it's the exact same size, exact same application, which mine is, and installation. is. Okay, guys, that took forever. About 15 minutes to get it in. Double the time it took it to get it out. So, um, my window was before, it was like I had a gap here and the whole window was moved forward. And that was because my window run was, which attaches right here, um, the window run didn't have the window seal in it. So, it was pushing the window forward, which was giving me the gap, and which was probably the whole issue with this door. So, I didn't need to install the regulator. But at least you guys have a little DIY on how to do regulators on an EK. I'm going to do the driver's side now because I know the regulator is bad on that side and I'm not going to show you guys because this is boring. So I'll show you guys what we're going to do next after the regulators probably, um, I don't know, you guys probably want to see the car so I'll pull it out tomorrow and show you guys what it looks like tomorrow in the sunlight. So I apologize for boring you guys with the window regulator stuff. I know it's probably not anything you guys really want to see but here's the car in the daylight finally. It's out. And it's at a state right now where I'd call it pretty much done. The only thing I got to do right now is install my power steering pulley. So that's going to come soon here. Probably not even going to show you guys. This might be the last vlog for this car because I'm kind of thinking about selling it. I don't know. We'll see. I might just post it up high, see what I can get for it. If it doesn't sell, I'm just going to daily drive it. So the front lip looks a lot nicer. 
everything about this car, I think it looks looks way nicer than when when I first bought it. And I hope hope you guys agree too. But um, I need some money to you know start my EG. I want to start the Lexus. I want to hook up the garage a little bit better. And the best way for me to get that money is going to be to sell this car. So let me show you guys the engine bay, the finished product. It turned out pretty good. Let's pop the hood really quick here. So I haven't detailed the car yet. I just washed it, wiped it down. It's okay. I'm going to detail the interior, maybe get a wax job. And then wet for me washing it, but there she is. I know my manifold's all dirty. And there's a couple of little things I got to sort out really quick here, but I'm going to knock that out tonight. And I'm going to get this thing sold. So super excited. Really quick, fun, easy project here. Um, I'm excited to start driving it. I drove it last night for about 45 minutes, just bombing around. Had a blast. Uh, I'm driving it to work tomorrow, so um, I don't expect to come up on any issues or anything, but there she is. I mean, I'm really excited. It was a fun little project, about a month's time, and not a complete transformation, but lots of maintenance, you know, lots of cleaning up in the engine bay. The engine bay looks a billion times better than what it did. I don't know if you guys remember or if you even watched the first vlog on this, but it was filthy and it's really nice now. The paint really helped out. I could have gone a lot farther and put a lot more money into it. It really would have gone the extra mile in the bay, but I basically spent nothing to make this bay look good. I got like 30 bucks in paint and clear, and I'm really excited about that. So for very little money, let's see. The radiator was 50 bucks. The clutch line was 15 bucks. The intake was 25 bucks. Um, the clutch was 50 bucks, but I got my money back by selling the old clutch. Um, I got like under $400 into this car, and I expect to make at least $1,500 profit on it when I put it up for sale. So um, this will be the last vlog for the EM1, unfortunately. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys like my videos and like what I'm doing here, please give me a like, give me a subscribe. You know, it means a lot to me if you know I can get some more subscribers. I know I only got a few. Nobody's really watching my videos, maybe because what I'm doing is lame, but whatever. This is just my build thread, so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep rolling. You guys are gonna see my other cars here soon. And uh, you know, like I said, if you like what I'm doing, please give me a subscribe. I think I got like 10 subscribers, which I've only been doing this for like a month and a half, but I honestly thought maybe I'd have a little more. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I need to tag my videos or something. I don't know. If you guys have any tips or pointers, let me know. But like I said, this will probably be the last video on this car. Um, I'm going to start working on my other stuff here probably this weekend. And I'm going to start driving the EM1 if not selling it. So um, there she is. Maybe I'll have it next time you see a video. Maybe I won't. But take it easy, guys. Like, subscribe, comment. Have a good night. So you thought the video was over. I thought it was too, but then I realized that I wanted to talk about a few things about the project and like the whole point of the build thread and everything like that. So this was my first YouTube like series or videos or anything like that. And I'm, I suck at filming and I'm trying to get better. And I hope you guys are like bear with me because I know I suck at, at editing and I suck at filming, but I mean, it is what it is. Hopefully you guys will appreciate the comment or the content that I'm putting in rather than the quality of videos that I'm putting in for now. Um, so I wanted to talk about the M1 a little bit more and like what I have into it and, and everything like that. And like the whole goal of the car was actually for me to, to fix it up and sell it. And I've really decided that I probably should sell the car because I don't need any more two door cars. You know, I, I, I really, if it was like a, 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 like a GSR sedan or something like that with four doors, because I really need to have four doors now because of, you know, my son and having to cart him around to daycare every day. Um, it's just not practical for me to keep the EM1. So unfortunately I am going to sell it. Um, I'm going to list it up here probably within the week. As you guys know, there's a few bugs I got to work out still, but maybe I'll actually put it up this week. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk about like what I have into the car. You know, I have like around, like I purchased the car. Actually, I actually traded for this car um, this winter. I traded a Lexus LS 400 for it that I had $1,500 into it. And the Lexus just didn't work out for me. It was gonna be like my, my beater sedan daily and it, it just it didn't work out for me. It wasn't what I wanted for a daily. 
So I just kind of put it up. I, I saw this car for sale, and I think the <coughs> I think the previous owner was asking four thousand dollars for it, and I just offered the Lexus, and and the guy he he was interested in it. He wanted a big body sedan, and it was like dumped out on twenty inch wheels. It looked really cool, and I, I got a really good deal from a buddy on it, but it just wasn't. It just wasn't what I wanted. It needed like some suspension work, and it had like 300,000 miles on it, and it just wasn't, it wasn't a, the paint was crappy on it. It just wasn't a car that I really wanted to drive. It was just too much of a beater. So I traded for the M1, so I had like $1,500 in this car when the vlog started. I wanna to talk to you guys about the money that I put into it, and where I'm at right now, and where I expect to be on this car, because the whole goal, if you go back to like the first vlog, was to fix this up and sell it. So the clutch was $50, the lug nuts, that I bought were twenty dollars. I made a, I made a list here of everything that I bought on it. The radiator was fifty. The intake was thirty. The clutch line was eighteen dollars. The front lip was twenty five. The road to slip streams I got from a buddy with tires. My buddy Gene. Shout out to my buddy Gene for hooking me up fat on those wheels. I didn't buy them specifically for the car. These are wheels that I just had out in the barn. So I don't know if I'm going to count that hundred fifty dollars into it. Um, paint, you know. I'm estimating about $50 in the paint. That's including the paint for like the upper strut bar, the wheels, stuff like that. Um, we got uh, the rear upper control arms. Both of them were $40. Fluids were like $40. Um, the flywheel, I put an eight pound aftermarket flywheel that came off of my Type R here. Um, that was just the part that I had, so I'm gonna count that as free. Plus I got to keep the ACT, which is going on my Type R, which is an upgrade for me. Um, on top of that, we got um, the shift, shift linkage. My buddy Honda Tyler really hooked me up on the shift linkage for 20 bucks. Plus, he gave me the free upper strut bar, which is a really good like hookup. He's just a really good friend and hooked me up there. Um, I put a $20 shift knob in it because it didn't have a shift knob when I bought the car. Um, the regulators were 60 bucks, and uh, the power steering pulley, which I haven't even installed yet. That's just the part that I have laying around. So my total investment, if you include all those parts together, was 500, um, like 570 bucks. Now if you take away the $50 that I got from selling the ACT clutch that came in the car, that brings me to like 420 some dollars. And then if you take the slipstreams off of that, we're at 370 some dollars or something like that. So technically I only have like $370 on top of the $1,500, that puts me at $1,800, $1,900 roughly total what I have into this EM1 with 128,000 miles. It's pretty clean. I think I'm sitting pretty good here and I expect to sell this thing for like, I don't know. I mean, EM1s are so like all over the place. This one isn't really a nice one. Like I've had, this is my third EM1. It's not the nicest one I've had, but there's so many out there that are like way worse than this one. Like all riced out and just crap and high miles, beat up, salvage titles, stuff like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if I get four grand for it. That would be like the ultimate goal. I don't think I'm gonna list it that high. I think I'm gonna bring it down a little bit under that and, and put it up for sale and try to get like a quick sale on it. So, I mean, that's gonna give me, you know, at least, you know, $1,500 that I'm gonna make on it. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. The whole point and the whole purpose of getting this car was um, when I bought the LS400, that was gonna be like my daily winter beater. And then I ended up picking up that Matrix for 300 bucks, which ended up being like the perfect winter beater with all wheel drive. So I wanted to sell the Lexus so that I could put money into the garage and like fix up the garage and I wanted to like insulate it and everything so that I could work out here throughout the winter, but that didn't happen. So, um, I mean, here we are now I'm, I got a project car instead of, you know, all my materials to make the garage nice. So, um, I, my main goal is to sell the EM1 and, and also, like I said, in one of my other videos, like this isn't just going to be about cars. It's also going to be about like hooking up the garage. Like I got to build a workbench. I want to have like a nice vice set up, maybe like a welding table. And then on top of that, upgrade the lighting, the walls, insulation, and then heat by next winter too. And I'm going to document all that on the channel like as best as I can. Um, I'm not like a carpenter. I was an auto technician. You know, I'm ASC certified master auto technician. I don't work at the dealer anymore. I, I moved on. I don't work on cars for a living anymore. But I mean, carpentry work is like a whole different ball game for me. So. Um, I'm going to be learning as I go and I'm going to try to document a little bit of what I do in the garage to like make the garage more usable for myself. So I think that selling the car and putting money in the garage may help the content and help the channel out a little bit more. Maybe a whole lot of people aren't into like cool garages and stuff, but uh, I don't know. I was like an active member on like the garage journal forums, which is a really cool forum for like hooking up your garage and all these guys with like super cool setups. In my old garage, I had like really well set up with heat and it was all insulated. And everything but I sold that house and then bought this one so I'm like kind of starting with a clean slate 
I've done a few things in here, but nothing major, you know, I, I like insulated the ceiling this fall to kind of help out, but I just wanted to like put this last clip in the video to um, kind of just show you guys what I have into the car and like the main goal is to make money on it. Obviously I'm gonna make money on it. I'm not gonna sell this thing for what I have into it. That would be stupid. It would be like the best deal EM1 in the world. I mean, I've purchased EM1s for, you know, $1,800 in the past, you know, and, and they do come up like very rarely, but you gotta like jump on them, you know? Um, but I mean, if, if you are in the market for an EM1, there's no reason why you can't find one for like what I have into it. This is my third EM1 and my first one had 89,000 miles on it. I bought it for $1,500 and it was like in excellent condition. And I ended up selling that thing for like almost $5,000. So, I mean, they're great cars. There's a, there's a whole lot of, um, they're very sought after. So there's like a big market for them. So they're like fun to work on. They're easy to work on. Parts are easy to find and you can make money on them. I, I don't know, I just, I love these cars. I love working on them. So I just wanted to end this video to show you guys like what I have into it and what my plans are with the car and the plans are to get more money so that I can like fix up the garage and then get my other cars up here and start working on them. So I hope you guys are enjoying what I'm doing here. Like I said, a million times. Um, I'm gonna go in for the night, get this video posted up. Take it easy guys, have a good night.